easy. This is distance. Um, so yeah, I put a thing up on um, Facebook and Twitter about me possibly doing some tutorials. Um, a lot of people have been asking about sub bass, so I thought I'd do a quick tutorial on sub bass. So um, I'm using Cubase 5. Um, I'm just going to load in uh, instrument track. I'm going to put in Massif. I thought I'd use Massif simply because I know it's widely used within dubstep. I know most of you at home will have it. So um, I thought it'd be a good place to start off, really. Okay, so now we've got uh, Massif open. <coughs> Uh, we're just going to be using the filter one, so let's turn off the second filter. Um, and we're only going to be using oscillator one, so you can all hear that. Um, just go down a couple of octaves, that's better, right? So, um, the way I approach subs is I try and make um, it sounds really strange, but I try and make like a sound, if you see what I mean. So more of a more of a synth sound than a sub, <clears throat> because by using an actual sound, it has more harmonics, like higher high harmonics. So then the sub in your tracks is more audible. Because um, when I first started producing, you know, I was making these crazy subs, you know, and my monitors made them sound amazing, you know, they just like shook the room and everything like that, but, you know, when you went and heard them or went and played it in my car or on an iPod or wherever, you couldn't hear the sub at all, you know, so it's only going to work on certain speakers and, and even then the speakers are just kind of just blowing air at you, you know, you're not really hearing anything, so I always try and make subs so that they have some higher harmonics, you know, and you can actually hear them. So, you know, if you was listening to an stereo or whatever, you can still hear your sub. So, um, I'm going to start with this, um, the smooth square. I mean, you could use like the sine triangle, which already sounds like a sub. But to me, um, when you use something like this, that's kind of got like more of a mid-range sound to it, you can tweak it so you you get like more of this audible sound that I'm talking about. So this is what we're starting with. I'm going to take this down a little bit, the position. So you know, that's kind of just taking the harshness down from the mid-range. We've got more of a, a sub sounding sound, but with a slightly mid-range bass if you get what I'm saying. Um, so next I'm going to put in a low pass 4 um, so you can hear what it's like with it fully open. I'm just going to put this up here. So you know this is what it's like fully open. If I tweak this you'll hear what it's doing. So you understand what that's doing. That's, that's basically acting like a low pass filter. So Anything below a certain frequency is getting played and all of the higher frequencies aren't getting played. So you get the idea. As I open it up, you'll hear more of the high end frequencies. So I'm just gonna keep this playing and turn it down till we just get like a nice rounded sub sound. Um, Always with a lot of things, you know, I always just tweak and muck around, you know, like I I haven't really rehearsed this, do you know what I mean? So I'm just going to tweak it like I would normally so you can just see yourself. It's best to just muck around and come up with the results rather than, you know, watching a tutorial and all like, you know, like, oh, well, he pushed this to that dB and I don't know, increased that to this number, you know, just do what sounds right to you. You know, so I'm going to just turn this up, see what it sounds like. Right, so to me that sounds pretty good. You know, it's kind of sounds quite warm, it's quite thick. Um, but again, just increase like the harmonics of it again. Uh, as I keep going on about, I'm going to add a distortion. So if we go to FX1, 
you know you could add any of these really but I'm going to just try the telly tubes it's not quite as harsh so at the minute it's completely dry there's no distortion on that if we turn this up you can hear what it's doing now the idea with this is I'm not trying to make a mid-range bass I'm trying to make a sub so I'm not going to push this too hard so what I'm going to do is bring the drive down to about there and that sounds to me that sounds that's, that's about that's like a perfect starting point really for a sub now um, so if I turn this off you'll hear the difference so that's it normally that's it with it on I mean you may not be able to hear it over the recording but it's just making it just slightly more um, warmer and rounder and, and again giving it those higher harmonics that I want It doesn't matter if you go over a little bit and give it, you know, a slightly more distorted sound because after you've made the patch, you know, you'd go, you'd then go on to EQing and compression, um, and you know, you kind of process it even further to make it even thicker and kind of more, more how you'd want it, and yeah, that's that's where we're going to go next. So uh, yeah, this this will be the sub patch. Okay, so the next thing uh, we're going to do is add a little bit of compression. Um, the reason I add compression uh, is one, to control some of the levels and also you can just make your sub bass sound a little bit thicker. Uh, and also, you know, if, if you try different compressors out, uh, you can get you can give your, your subs different um, character you know same when you're using them with drums or anything you can give it a certain sound um, obviously using hardware compressors would do this you know a lot better than than um, uh, software so basically um, I'm going to add in a compressor that I've downloaded for free um, I've done this so that you know you can all just try the same compressor and download it yourself um, yeah, so it's this one here. It's called Rough Rider by Audio Damage. You can just download it at audiodamage.com. They do it for Mac and for PC. Um, let's just get rid of this. Okay, so this is what we're working with. Um, whenever I start working with any compressor, I turn everything down. Uh, I do this just because, I don't know, I think it's a better way to work, it's a better way to kind of, I don't know, do things bit by bit or do them to the extreme and actually hear what they're doing. You know, a lot of people when they first start using compressors they don't really understand what they're doing and can't really hear what they're doing and it does, you know, it did take me a little while to kind of grasp what it is they're actually doing. So I mean, go, go and look online and find out a little bit about compressors. I'm, I may even do a tutorial at some point just on compressors, if you're lucky. Right, so that's our sub sound as it is. Um, I'm just going to bring the level down a little bit because that's quite loud. Okay, so um, the sensitivity on this compressor is the threshold. Um, normally, on a compressor, say on Cubase's own, um, where is it? So this is Cubase's own compressor. You know, you've got threshold ratio, attack, hold, release. So on this, it's that's your threshold. And there's your release, attack, and ratio. Okay, so um, again, I just experiment and see what works. Uh, so I'm gonna, with my when I'm compressing subs, I like to have quite. You know, I like it to be compressed pretty hard. You know, I like it to be really solid. So uh, I always have a short attack, and I like having a really long release. And I'll, I'll show you why. I, I mean, I can't explain why exactly, but on subs, it always tends to kind of click and distort slightly when you have a slower release. And I'll show you. So this is my sub now. Nothing's happening right now because we haven't turned up the threshold. The threshold is at what point it will start compressing. So if I set this to like minus, I don't know, like 5 dB or whatever, anything over that amount, that's when the compressor kicks in. So um, 
there's no figures on this or you know it doesn't tell you any numbers so I'm just gonna have to do this by ear so we've got to imagine we're compressing this pretty hard so as you can hear or I'll turn it up a bit so you can hear it it's kind of giving it a bit of a, a fuzz a fuzz kind of distortion sound to it I'm just gonna bypass it so you can hear it without it so that's it without and that's it with it on so you can hear it's kind of making it a bit distorted a bit clicky and it's because of the release time you know it's kind of releasing it too quick um, so by turning this up I'm just going to drop the threshold a little bit we've got higher ratio turn up the attack slightly well, as you can hear that um, weird fuzzy sound has gone now but if I take this down you'll hear it again as you can hear it it's going distorted when the note is long you'll see this drop in seeing as it drops that's when you're kind of getting the distorted sound so by having it higher it's got a much higher release so it's being compressed for longer which is what I want with my subs I want them being compressed pretty much the whole time they're being played and also as you go up in higher notes the you know on certain notes the volume increases quite a lot so this just gives it that little bit of extra control if you are doing melodies you know rather than just doing straight notes so that's it really I'm kind of happy with that um, one thing to always go to is the makeup you know when you use compression you automatically bring down or you can be bringing down the volume of the sounds you know so if if I use the bypass button you hear that's pretty loud when I turn this on it's kind of brought the volume down a little bit so you can see there that's where we are if I turn this off we're sitting a little bit higher so what I'm going to do is turn it up slightly turn this down right so that's it now we're kind of at a, we're at a similar level it's always best to get um, <clears throat> the levels you know the same so when you have this when you have the compressor off you've got the volume the same as when you have it on because you're not using a compressor to necessarily you know increase the volume like uh, you, you know you can go back and push the volume louder if you want but whilst you're just getting your compression right I try and do it so that it's not just increasing the volume because you can you can be tricked when you're using a compressor you know and put it on and be like oh my god it's really loud it sounds amazing but it could it, it might not actually be doing anything for the, for the sound so by having them set at the same volume you can you know there's more chance of you hearing what the compressor is actually doing so this is it without and with it on it's just making it that little bit little bit thicker I mean, it's harder for you, it's probably hard for you to hear over the recording but um, it's just giving it a little bit more characteristic you know a bit more solidness but you know you don't have to stop there I mean I, I constantly tweak and just see what's gonna what works best so you know that sounds terrible up there so that sounds pretty nice but there's a little bit of a click at the beginning so I'm going to turn this up slightly more Actually. yeah I'm going to go for that so That's it. So we've got rid of the click now. Just see what I mean, like by tweaking, you know, it's easy for you to just watch a tutorial and be like, oh, well, that's what you've done. He turned it to that, you know, turn this to there and done this to that ratio or whatever. You know, go by your ears. That's that's the best like advice I can give you. Is like, if it sounds right, then it's right. You know, don't <clears throat> just go by what people tell you. You know, like for ages, people used to tell me about, you know, cutting certain frequencies out here and boosting things there and it's, you know, it's, it's pointless. Like, if you're doing it and you're like, yeah, but it sounds shit, then it's shit, you know, you, you've got to make it sound 
how you want it to sound, you know. So anyway, compression is done. Next, we're going to move on to EQ. So the next thing after um, applying the compression, I always go for EQ, <coughs> and uh, EQing is you know important uh, to every aspect of mixing down your tunes and, and production and shaping the sound. Um, so basically, with sub. You know, <clears throat> I'm gonna just apply like a cut, um, so it's kind of acting like a, a low pass, low pass filter. I'm um, gonna turn it up a little bit so we've got quite a sharp shelf. Um, yeah, so basically what I'm doing uh, is cutting out all the top end frequencies. So you know, you, you, when it comes to EQing, this it's all about you know, kind of separating sounds from each other like you don't want your snare conflicting with say your mid bass or sub bass or the atmosphere or synths you know and it's it's about giving every sound its own space on the frequency range so when it comes to sub you know you're you're focusing on the lower end of the frequency range obviously so if I bring that down So you can hear we're um, cutting out some of the top end. So it's a lot warmer, uh, a lot more rounded this way. So uh, you know you can go further than this. Um, I mean it's, it's it's really hard to tell because I haven't got drums or anything else going. You know it's hard to know exactly what I would do um, because this is purely you know me just looking at sub. Uh, you know, for me to start talking about frequencies where you'd push it, you know, it's hard to tell because I don't have kick drums in the way or, or anything like that. I mean, if you had a kick drum, you know, you may duck out a certain frequency so your kick drum can can get through, you know, and kind of ride the, the sub. Um, so, I mean, what you could do is you can, um, you know, obviously peak at certain frequencies, I mean, or boost at certain frequencies. So, you know, 50 hertz which is where we are now is the real kind of guts of the sub like that gives you the real you know makes your chest rumble everything that's that's where it is if you really want to shake the system um but doing it without being stupid like you don't want to be pushing you know kind of 40 30 hertz because it just won't you know you won't be able to hear it um so you know you can just experiment I mean, it definitely gives it <coughs> a weightier bottom end, which is what you want when it comes to sub. Um, but you know, you don't want to overdo it. Uh, and again, you want to compare it to what other percussion and sounds you've got going on at the time. Um, you also, you know, you're not going to hear anything kind of below 30 hertz. So, you know, you're best off rolling it off slightly just because you don't want it, like I say, just kind of, you don't want it making the speakers just push air. You see what I mean, which is what they'll do, because they, you know. So if we uh, put another cut on that, that's a bit extreme. <laughs> so if we lift that up, so you can kind of see what we're doing. We've we've basically given it a little dip, um, you know, retouch up certain frequencies if if it reduces them. But you know, you can also boost um, higher frequencies to give it more of uh, more harmonics like I was talking about earlier um, but you can go further than this you know if, if you really wanted to be strict or you know really want to be sure you weren't getting any of these high end frequencies you can add a you could add a low pass filter so I'll just show you a, a you know kind of like a this is a, just a free one a real you know simple one so at the moment it's on low pass so you'll hear you know, by turning that down you're getting rid of all the high-end frequencies but as you lift it up so basically anything beyond you know 130 Hertz is is not gonna be played you're not gonna hear it you know so it's a really good way just to make sure that nothing's gonna be conflicting but I don't always use use that you know um, I'm hoping you know you, if you're using a good enough EQ it should just do that anyway so uh, that's it really. I mean, if you wanted to go further in looking at ways of still making your um, your bass warmer or give it, you know, make it a bit more richer in harmonics, you could add 
distortions again if you wanted um, this is a, a good free distortion it's not too harsh but it's good it's almost a bit like a saturator it, it kind of you know just slightly distorts and give it a warmer edge you can hear that it's kind of like giving it making it slightly distorted which isn't what I want really you know at this time but when you've got a whole project rolling you might need it you know you might just think well you know that sub ain't really doing nothing i want it to stick you know be a bit more noticeable so then you might add distortion so yeah i mean you can check this one out this is a free one you get it from camaudio.com it's pretty decent so um that's it really um you could you know some people have ways in which they like their you know their, their compressors and EQ. Some people might want their EQ first and then their compressor. I mean, I know people that EQ, then compress, and then EQ again and do all kinds of tricks. So, it's again, it's all, all up to you, all up to what you're wanting from the sound. You know, as I've been saying the whole way through this, it's about your ears, it's about what you want, not what you're being necessarily told. I mean, what I'm showing you is just guidelines and it's what I do. It's not necessarily right for everybody, but just give you an insight you know and uh but that's about it you know i hope this has been helpful in some way if you've got any questions you can you can hit me up if you like on facebook or whatever and i'll try and reply so yeah that's it i hope you enjoy